What if it's possible to spread happiness through different abilities? My name is Angelina Carlton. I'm the hostess of the Design Your Legacy podcast. And this morning, I have the privilege and pleasure of introducing Mark and John Cronin. They have a family business and the world's largest sock company known as John's Crazy Socks. It's a father-son venture inspired by co-founder John Lee Cronin, a young man with Down syndrome. John's affinity for crazy socks, about 4,000 today, paired with his love of making people smile, made their mission clear to spread happiness. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you being here. Angelina, we've been looking forward to this conversation. We love the approach you take of, you know, what's the legacy? You know, it's what's going to last more than just today and this week? Yes, yes, wonderful. So let's start with your legacies. So many people, I would say, struggle with defining their legacies, and perhaps their circumstances had less or more stress than what the two of you faced that one fall year. I think it was 2016 or 17. So how did you go about defining your purpose, which ultimately gets to become a part of the legacy you are designing today? Well, that's a big question, right? So when we started the business, we were looking to survive. We were, we were testing the idea and we were looking to survive. Um, and whose idea was it? I did my idea. Right, because you love crazy socks. I do. I love crazy socks. It was John's idea to go into business together to, to sell socks. Yes. Um, we tested the idea. But the way the business was set up and certainly started was an outgrowth of our character. And that develops over time. You know, John, you're how old are you? I'm 26. Uh, I'm 63. I've been he, preparing. He's old. Yeah, I am old. <laughs> Seasoned like I'm, fine wine. <laughs> I've been preparing my whole life for this interview, right? And, and who you are makes itself manifest in everything you do. So when it came to starting the business, there were fundamental beliefs that had become part of our character that became embedded in the business. You, you can't turn it off and turn it on. Um, and then over time, we refined that and articulated it more. Does that make sense to you? It uh, does. And I almost wonder if perhaps the two of you have that natural entrepreneurial spirit of what I call turning problems into opportunities. John is an is absolutely a natural entrepreneur. Yes, I am. And and I've gone back and looked over my life. And even as a kid, I was doing entrepreneurial things. I didn't have the language for it. Um, but with John, it's that problem solving ability that's always there. Right. I mean, here here's an anecdote. I guess you must have been in high school or something. And I, your, yes. your mom and I, we were out. He's home alone. We're, you know, we're not very good parents. He's home alone. Um, I met a macaroni at Boston. You, you wanted to make some macaroni and cheese. Yeah. And, I wanted, yeah, I and, wanted and the microwave was busted. What do you yeah. do? So what do you do? I I, I did. I went to a, a, a neighbor's house. Uh, uh, I, I, I asked, uh, uh, okay, I heat my food. Knocked on a neighbor's door and said, can I borrow your, your microwave? I got to heat up my food. I mean, you know, so instead of complaining or, or whining, it was, what do I do? And finding and, the solutions. And that's yes. how we started this yes. business, right? And, and this is your, your origin story always gives you your DNA. Um, so for us, part of it started here with John. You were, where were you back in the fall of 16? I, 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 I was at um, Huntington High School. I, I go to be my last in school. So Angelina, he's trying to figure out, what do I do next? Right. I, 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 I've been looking at school programming, uh, school programming school. And jobs, right? And jobs, yes. 
Um, I, I can't, I can't find a great object I don't like. So he didn't say anything he liked, but here's your point about an entrepreneur is one who yes. sees a problem, but turns it into an opportunity. That's exactly what John did. If you didn't see a job you wanted, what I, were you going to do? I, I said, I, I want to create one. I want to make one. And what'd you tell me? I said to my dad, I want, I, I, I want to have a father and son being together because I, I think I, 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 it's, I, I, I want to make some father and son being together. He comes says, dad, let's go into business together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't know that. Um, I, was it age 21 is the cliff? And so for, for public school, because a lot of times we live in our own bubble, we don't know what we're not exposed to. So I think it's interesting. He came to that point and he either could find meaningful job opportunities in the marketplace or he could say, I'm going to create it. Right. And, you know, and John's situation is typical for people with a differing ability. Um, you know, that 21 year old cliff you referred to when you're in school. Everything is right in front of you. All your programs and supports are right there. But once you turn 21, you're on your own. And in some states, like we live in New York, there are a lot of programs around. But in some states like Florida or Texas, there's nothing. So you have to go out and fashion and putting everything together. And, and you know some of the numbers are revealing. The unemployment rate for people with a disability is double the national average. Oh, I didn't know that. But that doesn't really tell the story. Okay. Only one in five people with a disability are employed. There just aren't enough opportunities. And that made what he said so powerful of, okay, if the world's not accommodating me, I'm just going to go out and make one. We're going to make this happen. All right. I joked with my husband that maybe he was like Henry Ford or something in his last life as a business person. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of good stuff, right, buddy? Get that. Um, and John has that spirit all the time. Um, you know, here, here's another example from our business. So we started in December of 2016. It's to test the idea and it tested well. So we said, okay, we'll build something here. So in January of 2017, we're finding out firsthand, nobody buys anything in January because they spent all their money at the holidays. Um, and that's when we discovered that people wore crazy socks to celebrate World Down Syndrome Day. And what day is World Down Syndrome Day? I it, I, it, I um, March 21st, I, I, I just why of, of 321, uh, 321 chromosomes. Chromosome. People, the way you get Down syndrome is uh, we all have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Yes. People with Down syndrome have an extra 21st chromosome. I mean, extra love. A little bit of extra love, right, Pam? <laughs> so there we are, and we find out that people wear crazy socks to celebrate this day. Well, it brings so, more meaning than just socks from Hanes or Fruit of the Loom or Gap. Well, right. so we go out looking. At that point, we were only selling other people's socks. And we go out looking to find a pair of Down syndrome related socks. Couldn't find one. Nobody made one. What do you say? I, I, I said, I want to make one. I want to create one. Uh, those socks are, are, all, are, are all my design. And it says, a uh, three hot plain wine that is a blue yellow color for a world that some day. John designed the world's first Down syndrome themed socks. Um, and because he just said, okay, if nobody else makes them, yeah, we'll make them. Absolutely. That is an entrepreneur. It's brilliant. It's wonderful. Sometimes people, when they sit down and they think about their legacy, sometimes it's a conceptual plan. And other times, as we know, there's that expression about how, was it, uh, necessity is the mother of invention or invention is the something. <laughs> yeah, it is, you know, the ne necessity is the mother of invention. And part of it is, you know, it, it speaks to what you mentioned before about an entrepreneur. You're always looking for opportunities. So, you know, here, take, uh, take the pandemic. Nobody plans for a pandemic. 
and it hits your business. And it was terrible for our business. We lost hundreds of thousands of dollars when the pandemic first hit. So what do you do? Well, to paraphrase the movie, there's no crying in business. You have, <laughs> you have to figure out what are you going to do? So the first thing is we, we had to take care of people. You had to make sure that everybody was safe and you were watching out for people's health. Then. And you have employees to think about. Yes. And that's, yes. that's what I mean, particularly many of our employees, because more than half of our colleagues have a different ability. And many of them were particularly vulnerable. I mean, here's one example. People like John, people with Down syndrome, are not more likely to get the virus. But in those early strains, if they did get it, they were five times more likely to be hospitalized, 10 times more likely to die. So we had to be careful. But then you look and say, OK, how can we adapt to this? So we host tours from schools and social service agencies, move those online. And guess what? When you do that, now the world opens up. So we've had people from around the world come to take a tour of our business. We do a lot of public speaking. You move those online. Again, that's opened up the world. So you adapt, you know, we, we make socks. What, you know, what can you do with socks? Well, we wanted to say thank you to frontline workers. Right. So what socks did we make? Uh, 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 we made a healthcare superhero socks. Healthcare superhero socks to say thank you to frontline workers. And they have raised over $50,000 for frontline workers. But then you look and say, okay, now, what other opportunities exist? What else can we do? And part of this, you have to know what your purpose is. You have to know what you're about and what your values are. Because when you get hit with turmoil, and you're going to be hit with turmoil, you know, it's only a question of when. That's what, you know, your purpose will be your North Star and will we'll keep you steering in the right direction. So for us, there were some obvious things. We, um, we started making masks, right? In, but in the way we would, masks that would make people feel happy and would celebrate causes and raise money. What's our mission? A spreading happiness. So if people are all isolated, how could we spread happiness? Well, here's one way. What do you do every Tuesday afternoon? Every Tuesday, I hold a dance party on every Tuesday at 3 p.m. either time I write in a U.S. Well, so if we can't all be together, John brings people together online just to dance. What better way to spread happiness? Yeah, it's so much fun. And we started a Facebook Live show, the Facebook, the Spreading Happiness show just to bring a little joy and connect with people. And now that has spawned our Spreading Happiness podcast. But you see, you create those opportunities if you go looking for them. Yeah, and I, apparently John also sings to the customers on their birthday. You do, you sing happy birthday? Yeah, yeah. I, um, uh, I sing happy birthday to the customers. I, I have a customer get it. And I, 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 I sing a happy birthday to, to all the customers. Uh, I, 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 I have a, um, a, a email. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I email, I sing you a happy birthday. We, you and sing a lot. I sing a lot. We sing together sometimes. Yeah. Um, I sometimes, we don't really sing very well. Right. But... I sometimes for me, Dad, yeah. I sing like a, a trap of an um, animal. Right. It, sometimes your voice sounds like you've been an animal that's been trapped for three days. But, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for the world's largest sock company, John must be, with his dad, Mark, must be bringing a lot of happiness because that's a lot of uh, birthdays for the world's largest sock company. Yes. And some people, nobody remembers their birthday. So kudos to John for showing up. It, but that's part of our values, right? Of 
we're always looking to make personal connections with our customers. We're not focused on transactions. We're looking for that connection and sharing experiences with our customers. And once you believe that, then it becomes manifest in everything we do. And everybody in our organization is looking for ways to make that happen. Very cool. So if you could define your legacy, whether it's as an individual or as a family business, what would you say? I think it's two parts. One, you know, we we'll always want to show what's possible. So we want to show that you can succeed in running a business that's based on principles of spreading happiness, treating people well, you know, doing for others, expressing gratitude. Um, but more narrowly, we want to show what people with differing abilities can do. And we look to do that all the time in every way possible. And that is, we want that to be our legacy. And this is not an abstract notion. When we, you know, we tested this idea, once we got it going, we were able to articulate it. For me, one of the things that mattered was making sure I set John up for the rest of his life. That John would have meaningful work to do for the rest of his life. Yeah. And, and you've also given 5% um, back to special Olympic athletes as well as other causes. So as your business has grown, you've also been able to step into kind of a philanthropic role. Well, that's the giving back is baked into everything we do. It's not, let's wait till the end of the year and see if we made money and then we'll write you a check. So yes, we started by pledging 5% of earnings to the Special Olympics. And why the Special Olympics? I am Special Olympic athlete. Yes, you are. Um, but then we've gone on to create these products that celebrate causes and raise money for those causes. So the first example was the Down syndrome awareness socks. But we have now multiple Down syndrome products and autism awareness socks, right. and cerebral palsy and Williams syndrome and pediatric cancer and, um, or firefighter tribute socks and EMT tribute socks. So we've now raised over $500,000 for our charity partners. Um, and, and that's part of what we get to do. And we're so fortunate to be able to do these things. Very cool, very nice. And what good long-term planning also, just to think wide and think far and... But that's, you see, that comes back to creating connections with customers. We're not just looking for, buy this now. And when you have a, an open and an honest relationship with your customers, when you bring them in and share experiences, that makes us more sustainable. That lets us survive and, and get through a pandemic. That's what helps us grow in the long term. Very nice. Very nice. And I would imagine that as you started to grow your business, new skills were required, such as public speaking, taking the TEDx stage, and so forth. What did you lean into as you developed what I might call your living legacy, or as you started to intentionally design your life's legacy? Well, you're learning all the time. My partner here, one of your great attributes is the way you're always coming up the learning curve. Right. Um, I, um, I, uh... I'm my, I, I've, I've been learning a lot. Um, I, I, I came over to my dad and I asked him all, uh, I asked him all, all the questions and I, 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 I asked him all, all the questions and I, I, I can learn. I can learn. You ask a lot of questions, right? Yeah. I, but it's, I, I'm really cool. and part of it is to be humble and 
and no, you don't know everything and you've got to learn. So you, and to lean into that. So I'll give you a couple of tangible examples. In 2017, we participated in a business accelerator program called yes, Mass Challenge. Um, based, they're around the world, but their largest program is based out of Boston. Um, so we'd go up there two days a week. We'd drive up Monday nights, get there one in the morning, spend Tuesday, Wednesday there, um, drive back, get home at one in the morning, Wednesday night. Um, but we were able to meet some really great people and encounter some mentors that still work with us today. The, the second example, um, we knew as we grew the business that we need we couldn't do this by ourselves. So in early 2020, right before the pandemic, we signed a strategic partnership um, with the perfect partner for us. It's a third generation family business, shared similar values. They've been manufacturing socks for department stores and brand names for 60 years. Um, so we knew we needed that help and that's somebody we could learn and grow with. Um, so you're always looking to pick things up. But, but I said before, you know, I'm 63. Every day you're learning things that will help you grow and you don't know where that's going to come from. So, so here's an example. When I was a young man, very different world. I hitchhiked all the time. I hitchhiked across the U.S. three times and down in New Orleans and around Europe. Yeah. Every time a car would come up, pull over, you'd run to get in that car. Now you hop in and you got to size up, size up that driver. You got to find out how we're going to get along. And in fact, you're the entertainment. And that ride could last 10 minutes or 10 hours. Well, if you do that a few hundred times, you learn some things. You learn about how to talk to people, how to listen to people. Was this in New York State people. or? You're like all around the place. Okay, you know, okay. I mean, you know, I hit from New York, from New York to Colorado to California. Um, so yes, that was 40 some odd years ago, but I'm still benefiting from those lessons today. Because it's a, it's people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when I was doing it, I wasn't going off saying, I'm going on a learning experience. No, I was on a great adventure. I recently heard a quote by Jim Rohn, and it said, a formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. Well, Yes, and and here's a, another way to you know think about it, break it down into something tangible. When uh, our eldest, his older brother Patrick, was getting ready to enter kindergarten, we were living in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, which uh, now is the heart of hipsterdom, Greenpoint, Williamsburg. We were early hipsters; we didn't even know it, but. He's getting ready to go to school and the local schools were terrible. And we're trying to figure out, what do you do? Uh, do we go there and fight to make them better? Do you move? Do you try to send them to private school? And one of the things we considered was homeschooling. We knew people had done that. Um, and as I pointed out to my sons, you know, we did think about it, but we didn't love them that much to spend all that time homeschooling. But but that's a false dichotomy. As parents, you're always educating your children. Yes, they learn things in school, but that's never enough. And then when you're done with school, you're never done. So when we started this business, I was 58 years old. We run an e-commerce business. When I got out of college, there was no internet. I couldn't have studied that if I wanted to. And I didn't know about marketing when I got out of college. You know, in school, there were so many things I didn't know. And you have to keep learning and learning them along the way because the world's going to keep changing on you. 
You know, technology will keep changing. So you constantly have to be learning. Yes, that's a great story. Thank you for sharing that. And it looks like from your times of hitchhiking, it must have been in the 80s? 70s. 70s, really and the old, world right? was different back then. Yeah, you don't see anybody hitchhiking anymore. Yeah. But I could regale you all day long with uh, stories of people I met there. So it's... Uh, Good Americans. Lots of people. Yeah, Lots very nice. People. So in executing your legacy, this is where the rubber meets the road in terms of actions. What have been some of the greatest obstacles as well as surprising positive milestones? Well, we've been incredibly fortunate. Um, we knew what we wanted to do. Um, it took us a few months to fully articulate what we were doing, but it was already there in terms of, you know, our mission, our five pillars that really drive the business. Um, there have been some difficult times, but knowing what we're about sustained us. Um, you know, we had very difficult financial times in 2019 uh, and we had offers. Oh, we'll give you money. What they want to do is buy the brand but we held tight to what we believe mattered. Um, now, as we try to grow the business, you know, you, oh, what's happening with, with social advertising? Well, but as long as we know what we're about and stick true to our true values, we'll find ways to reach people. Um, the surprising things, nothing surprises us anymore. Um, you appreciate it. We're grateful for it. But if you put yourself out there, um, good things can happen. So we've been the beneficiaries of some viral videos that other people have made about us. We've received a lot of positive media coverage. Um, we've spoken now, testified twice before the U.S. Congress right. and, and um, spoken at the United Nations. And this year, World Down Syndrome Day, the New York State Legislature honored John. Um, and we spoke at the, on the floor of the New York State Assembly. Um, these are remarkable things. And part of what we're learning is the only thing that holds us back is between our own ears. If we can dream it, we can go do it. Yeah, and I think uh, also John won, it was at the Entrepreneur of the Year Award? We've been, yes, EY has a, um, it turns out it's a prestigious award and they named us uh, Entrepreneurs of the Year um, for the Social Impact Award. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, well, I think it goes to show that anybody can turn, um, you know, a, a moment of, gosh, what do we do into hey, let's be entrepreneurs and solve problems and go on a social mission and live into our purpose and values and not feel sorry for ourselves. Because a lot of the times it's very easy to go into that victim mindset, but John yes. didn't. You never do, do you? Right. It's always, what are we going to do? How are we going to make this work? Right. You're always figuring stuff out. I do that. That makes you inspirational. <laughs> so... Um, what message would you give to others of any abilities who need to turn a tragedy into a legacy or what into their advice? legacy? And this could, be, advice? this could be family businesses who find themselves with industries being wiped out. Or this could be um, businesses that face bankruptcy because of the pandemic, et cetera. What's your advice? Um, my advice, follow your heart, follow your dream, work hard. So you can do. Does dad want to add anything to that? Well, well I never want to have to follow John, but. Uh, <laughs> you know, stop thinking about yourself and think more about others. Think more about the impact you can have. And think about what matters and then go do it. You, and, and part of that is you have to believe. Don't pay lip service. You're in trouble when you say, well, this is what I believe. And then you do this. 
know what you're about, know what you believe and go pursue that. And, and it turns out the more we do for others, the better off we are. Very well said, both of you. Thank you for speaking into that. Because I think something like the statistics for businesses, maybe they last at best four years, if they can even make it through the first year. And yeah, but when we made it five years, that was a big milestone that was still standing, right? And, and there's one other that to share because so much of what we're about is showing what people with different abilities can do. And it's really quite simple. Never be blinded by a person's limitations. Just be awed by their possibilities. Yeah, one of the things you had shared in previous videos when I did a little due diligence before our podcast episode today was you had said something along the lines of um, to not think about uh, individuals with differing abilities as if they need something from you, but rather what you can receive from them and it, yes. it shifted the perspective wheel. Yes, people have seen us in our personal life, um, my personal life, but large, you know, we, you don't, don't think about this as some sort of charity or altruistic action, or oh, I have to do something for somebody with a disability. No, we need them and they're waiting to help us. We just have to give them that chance. Right, bud? My dad. That's what you do. You know, so, when when we were starting this, I thought I had to help John. And then I realized, no, he was saving me. Yeah. And he doesn't have some of the same fears that others have been conditioned or programmed no, with. He does not, do you? My dad. You just go and do. Right. Wonderful. So uh, is there anything that inspires John or yourself? What inspires you? Miss um, Lee. Miss Lee, okay. Miss Lee is, uh, I, I inspire me. Because, and who, do you have to tell people who Miss Lee is? Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll try in there. Miss um, Lee is uh, my speech teacher. She, she taught me she she told me um she told me uh, I speak speaking more and I, 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 and I find myself that I, 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 that I learn about a uh, smaller words and and um yeah she she encouraged you and inspired you to get up in front of large crowds yes. and you do that now all the time. I, 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 and she, uh, she inspired me. I uh, also inspired me. Who? Dr. Mumu Sasson. And other teachers. And other teachers. She, she told me um, I love skills. Uh, it's just like a, a living, living independent. That 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 you are, uh, you are. Um, I go, I go on uh, 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 um, other things of that. Um, and the other one inspired me that her name is Miss Miss Cavignoni. She is my retail retail teacher. I went to I I spent my time in Huntington High School and Wellington Tech Program of Western Boosies. Here and here I I I took a retail class. I it helped me I I I learned about retail. Uh, I, 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 I just want me about uh, retail. I, I, I can have retail store like I look like this business. Well, you've been fortunate. You've had some good teachers that have inspired you and guided you, right? Yeah. You're a good man. And I appreciate that there have been good people that have entered your lives that have seen the brilliance and fostered and nurtured it. And you never know. Um, you know, I... I recently tracked down a college professor I had my sophomore year of college. He called me into his office and suggested that I apply for the honors program at the school. And I was doing a double take because I was not of that ilk. Um, 
And he, but he said, no, this would be good for you and you would, you, you would bring something to the program. And to show you how I probably really didn't deserve it, I'm thinking this will never happen. Meanwhile, he's the head of the program. So he knew something. Um, I did saw apply something. And, and, I, and I was accepted and it was a wonderful learning experience. So I got out of college in 1980, Trump ahead a few years. And uh, I go to graduate school and I went to the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. And my second year there, I was on their admissions committee. And one of the reasons I wanna be on it was to find out how the heck did I get in that school? And if one of the things became clear, a deciding factor was the fact that I was in that honors program. And had I not been in that honors program, I would not have gone to that graduate school. And that graduate school, altered the trajectory of my life. So I went back and, and wondered, you know, what possessed this man? You know, I was a bit of a wild, I was kind of untamed in those days. And what possibly possessed him to have such generosity to take the time to help me? And that one small moment, that where he did take the time to care, altered my life. How awesome is that? And all of us possess that little ability to, to touch somebody and maybe just a little nudge can help them the rest of their life. That's wonderful. Sometimes I, I wonder if God shines a light on certain people through others. It's possible. Um, and we would hear when John was born, we would hear from people, well, God only gives a burden to those who can handle it. And objected in two fronts. First, John's not a burden. This is my son. This is the world. But second, it's a curious view of the, of the universe. If you imagine that somehow God is floating around and he looks down at somebody and says, oh, their life seems to be going well. Boom, let's see if they can handle this. But instead, I'd, I'd look at it that having John in our family has made our two other sons and my bride and myself better people. He helped lift us up. Um, instead of us having to lift him up. Pretty Congratulations, powerful. John. Yeah. I think there's a depth to the human experience that we walk here. And um, like you had said before, with that label of a burden, it, it doesn't un encapsulate the full picture. It's just easy vocabulary when people can't think beyond what they already know within their own bubble. And you have to shed that. Yeah, know? that's you part of security. You have to see what's out there. Yeah, the wisdom yeah. and the maturity. Yeah. So in closing, um, what do you think stops most people from taking the chance? You had mentioned sometimes they focus too much on themselves. Well, I think that's part of it. Um, and there's a fear. There's a fear if I, if I let go, what's going to happen to me? At least I know this. I may be miserable, but I know this misery, you know, whereas it's scary. It, it can be scary to go forward. It can be scary to, to take a chance and go against the grain or try something new or to put yourself out there. And, and yet I think what most entrepreneurs learn is, yes, you may fail. I can tell you about failed business of that. I can tell you about successful ones, but failed ones. Failure, that's just tuition you pay to learn more, right? That, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's something that you're gonna try and if, if something fails, well now, well, I've learned that doesn't work. I do something else and There's it makes you stronger. The trial and error, yes. You know, there's, there's a line, you know, in boxing, the champion is the fighter who can answer the next bell. 
who keeps getting up and coming back and fighting. That's what you want to do. Well said. Are there any closing thoughts as we come to a wrap, um, such as even the website of your uh, Crazy Socks company or any just closing thoughts? You want to tell people where they can find us? Yes. I, you can find us at SeansCrazySocks.com. And when you do, you're going to get great socks. You already mentioned we have 4,000 different socks. We have over 29,000 five-star reviews. We have great socks, great service, but here's the real deal. You're going to enable us to hire people with different abilities. You're going to help make that happen. We've created 34 jobs so far. 22 are held by people with different abilities. You're going to help us give back. You're going to help that advocacy work. And most of all, you're going to help us spread happiness. How great is that? And you can invite people, invite people to join your dance party. Yes, Dad. Or to listen to the Spreading Happiness podcast, 30 minutes of making you feel good each week. And all of this is at our website. That is delightful. Thank you, both of you, for speaking into your message and into your legacy and also the journey that it's been from the very beginning to today, the ups and the downs, as well as the new open doors and the partnerships, the collaborations, and, and just sticking to the innovation of asking new questions. So. Thank you to both of you. I think that you make a, an excellent collaborative team and uh, you have an excellent family business. And thank you for also being positive role models regarding what one's legacy can be. Well, thank you for having us on your podcast. Thanks so much. It's my pleasure. Okay. Thank you so much again.